What is a finale? The only finale I know about is the finale that happens like at the end of a musical when everybody comes together and it's this big final song send off. So what is a finale as a song section? That doesn't sound like something I've heard of. And you know what? You'd be right, because as far as I can tell, it's a term that I made up. But we're going to talk about what it is and why you should write one in this episode. Hello, friend. Welcome to another episode of Songwriter Theory. Today, we are wrapping up our mini-series, which is, well, really a full series. It wasn't much of a mini-series, was it? It's like eight episodes or something um, about how to write each section of a song. And of course, as you know by now, if this is not your first um, your first one that you've watched or listened to, you know by now that... We don't talk about how to do it as like, uh, okay, do this chord and this, because that's, you know, everything's going to be different. So we're trying to dial it back, zoom out a little bit, right? And and look at like, okay, what what makes a chorus tick, big picture wise? Like, what is the job of a chorus? What is the job of a first verse, second verse, et cetera? A link to the playlist. If you have missed other ones up in the, I think it's right-hand corner. If you're on YouTube, if you're on a podcast, sorry, you don't have that, but you can just go back and listen to those previous podcasts. Today, we are wrapping up fittingly with a finale, which is the only song section that we're covering that, as far as I can tell, yes, I made up. Now, I think that it's used in some songs, or at least one song that I know of, but it doesn't have a name. It's usually... Uh, considered like the chorus, but it only happens once at the end and everything else before was really a pre-chorus or whatever, but I fundamentally disagree with that way of looking at things. And this is a very uncommon thing to do. I want to talk about what it is, why it is that you should consider using it and what some of its strengths are that I think it has that can really help in your songwriting, um, even if it's a bit unconventional. But hey, unconventional can be good. So what is a finale? First, let's look at that that show example I gave in the intro. So normally when you think of a a finale, right, you think of that as as the final uh, movement in in like a concerto or something, right? Like, Like you go to a classical concert and that final part is the finale, right? It brings some of the themes all together and it's the most epic piece to like really leave you on a high of like, wow. That was amazing, right? They don't do some subtle ballad song at the end. No, they they punch you in the face metaphorically with sonic waves at the end, right? Um, and, you know, a musical has the same concept usually, right? It, it ends on a huge song where all the cast members are coming out and singing. It's not, it's not just, you know one character singing some love song for her to another character. It's not a duet. It's it's a whole, the whole group of people usually are coming out and it's this big, epic, exciting song. And then this is even true for most concerts you go to in a sense, right? Like you can consider that, you know, you always know if you go to a concert, right? Whatever your artists, the artists you're going to see, whatever their most famous song is, almost always his last. The only time that they don't do that is if they have so many hits that everybody knows that, you know, there's 10 that they could put there and their whole concert is basically just an equal level of hit, right? But for most artists, you know, for a lot of artists, practically speaking, right, they have one song that everybody knows and then a bunch of just other stuff. Some people know some and then the diehard fans know all their music still. But they save that song everybody knows for last, right? And a part of that is just practically speaking, especially if, say, they're coming after a band that that maybe, you know, the earlier band, some some of the fans of the earlier band are just kind of staying, but really the band they were interested in played before. That might be a case, right? And there's one song they want to hear. If there is one, this is the one. So they save it to the end to keep people there. So that, practically speaking, is a part of it. But, But I think the main part is it ends on a high note, right? No matter how the concert was, at the end of the day, you remember, because psychologically we remember the beginning and the end of things much, much, much better than the middle. So it takes advantage of that and says, hey, the song that we know 
90% of these people, the highest percent of these people are going to love and be like, yeah, they played that song. That was awesome. They want to leave you with a fond memory of them. So that's why they save that really great song for last, right? It just, it makes sense. It's logical. It's, the, it's a good decision to make. So as far as a song section, I consider a finale the same exact thing. The only difference is now we're taking that concept instead of making it a song in the context of a concert or a song in the context of a musical or, you know, a, a movement or whatever at the end of a, of a, of a, a classical piece of music or, you know, a, a whole concert's worth of music. Instead of that, we're taking that concept, that psychological concept of like save that best for last and have this big epic main point right at the end and leave on a high note. We're taking that concept and putting it into our song. Normally that concept is reserved for like the final chorus, right? But here we're making a brand new section of our song in order to do this. So to me, a finale is something that accomplishes that same exact thing in the context of a song. First requirement of a finale for me, what makes a finale a finale? At the end, and only the end, will it play. You will not have repeated it earlier in the song, so it's not a chorus. It's repeated zero times, because you only hear it once, and it's at the very end, because finale, right? It's the finale, it's at the end. So it does not appear earlier in the song. It is once at the end, done. Second requirement is that it needs to be a particularly dramatic part of the song. Does it need to be the number one highlight? Usually I would say yes, but I, I can I can say, you know, there, there are some scenarios where maybe that is, that's not the case. But it certainly is probably not a dialed back section. It needs to leave on a high note. Now, maybe, maybe in your song, it could be actually musically the, the least sonically dense. But the lyrics are so profound that it's sort of a, the biggest emotional punch in the face anyway. Sure, fine. Usually that's not how I would write them or I have so far. But hey, that could work too. Again, anything I say, right? Like we're, we're trying to think, we're trying to talk together as much as we can when I'm talking to a camera, of course. Um, but like the whole point of this is to sort of open your mind to different concepts, right? You don't have to agree with me on everything. Maybe you think a better finale is one that like drops all the instruments out. Fine. Whatever. The point here, right, is, is, is just to change that mindset about like, you know, cause usually we take for granted like, oh yeah, we end with the chorus. Maybe we return to the verse for like one last little part at the end of the third chorus or fourth chorus, right? So we're trying to break us out of that. Which again, there's nothing wrong with that. I use that all the time as well. But if you can find something to make your song subtly different and, and, and have a different structure that helps communicate the point better, why not? Which we're going to dive into when we ask the question, when should I write a finale? Which we will get to. So stay tuned till the end. Also, if you're enjoying this content so far, or if you've been here before, be sure to drop a like. Helps with the YouTube algorithm. I appreciate it. It's awesome. When you do that, and if you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. Click the little notification bell every single week. Come out with new videos like this, talking about songwriting, all sorts of things on songwriting from music theory to um, lyric writing. Love talking about lyric writing to stuff like this where we're talking about song sections. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you know when new videos come out. I do one of these videos every single Monday. And now I'm starting to do a uh, song, what do I call it? Song analysis on, I think I'm going to release them every Thursday, but I'm not going to commit to that right here, right now. But that's the end goal. It might be every other week at first to sort of warm into it. We'll see. Um, but I have the first one out, which is on Journeys Don't Stop Believing, which is connected to this content. So if you haven't already, Maybe go back and, and after this podcast, listen to that because I break down why I would argue that Don't Stop Believing actually utilizes a finale. That's why I chose that song for this week to lead into this episode because it's the one and only example I've found in music that people would know where it uses something that I would consider a finale concept. So let's dive into the second point. What makes a finale a good finale? Wraps up the song. 
So normally, right, your chorus bears the responsibility of being a part of the song that has to wrap up each verse in a sense, right? It needs to make sense after a verse. After each little story development that you have in first verse, chorus, second verse, chorus. It needs to make sense in the context of all of that. But you usually have the same chorus at the end of the first verse that you do at the end of the song. So it also has to double as a wrap up to this song as a whole. So that's a lot of responsibility that we're putting on the chorus, which can be fine, right? A great chorus usually can bear that responsibility. But sometimes the chorus might function as a good main point or a good thing to talk about right after verses, but it might not be something that really wraps up the song the way we want. So a good finale is going to step in and, and bear that responsibility. So now the chorus just bears the responsibility of wrapping up verses or, or highlighting that main point you're getting from the verses. And then the finale works on its own and its main and really only function is to wrap up the entire song. And I get, like, if you have a good chorus, you should be able to repeat it three or four times and it'll still be interesting, right? But another part of this is that, practically speaking, your chorus at the end of the song is the peak of the song because usually your arrangement is the most dense, most sonically dense, most interesting, right? It's the biggest chorus of all. When, 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 bigness in the sense of, of sonic bigness, right? Like, so if you had 20 tracks for the second chorus, like 20 tracks of different instruments. Now you have 25 tracks for that final chorus to make it sound that little bit bigger, right? Or maybe you change up the vocal a little bit, or maybe add more background vocals, whatever it is you're doing to like thicken it up to really make this like, this is the final chorus, the final say. And that works, right? That's very effective. But what's even more effective is when you have a whole different song section just to accomplish that, right? Because there is, there's still a risk of there being some element of, yeah, but I've heard this chorus three times before. So what? You added another electric guitar and some backing vocals. I still enjoy the chorus, right? But it doesn't, it just doesn't hit quite as hard when I've already heard it two or three times. But with a finale, that fixes that issue, right? Because now the finale, it is a new section. They've never heard it before. So, to me, what a finale does, at the end of the day, that makes it so special, is it does that same thing, that same effect I was talking about when your favorite artist, you go to their concert, and your favorite song or the most popular song, whatever, um, I recognize those might not be the same thing, but for most people in the audience, right, their favorite song is the song that everybody knows. A lot of people might have even come to that concert just for that song. Um so for the vast majority of people, that leaves on a high note, and that's what keeps people standing ovation at the end, right? And they keep clapping, hoping the artist will come back out. And yes, I know that now it's just a thing that the artist always comes back out pretty much. Um, so, so in this case, we're talking about the finale finale, right? Like they leave, they come back, and then, and that's usually why we all know they're coming back, right? Because, you know, if... The Goo Goo Dolls haven't done Iris yet. You know that they're like contractually obligated to play Iris at every concert, right? I mean, they're not literally trans, but you know, can you imagine how ticked people would be if Goo Goo Dolls didn't do Iris, right? Or if Journey didn't do Don't Stop Believing, right? Like people would be ticked. They have to do those songs, right? So you know when they leave the stage, oh, they're coming back. They haven't done Don't Stop Believing. They're coming back. It's fine. It's fine. Well, we'll cheer. We want more, but, and then even though you know it's the end of the concert after they do Don't Stop Believing or after they do Iris or, you know, whatever it is for your band, people are still like, yeah, please come back out again, even though that doesn't happen. People want that, right? It leaves them wanting more because you just had the high, high, highlight at the end and then boom, now we're gone. You're going to have the fondest of fond memories with us, right? I mean, it's like the equivalent of, you know, I, I don't know, have, having the best date you've ever had and then your girlfriend breaks up with you, right? Or, or boyfriend breaks up with you, right? Like it, it, you had the best memory of them and then psh, nothing, right? Like talk about leaving somebody wanting more, right? Like we just had the best date. What the heck just happened? But anyway, so it's a similar concept of the finale at the end of your song should leave that listener wanting more. They're like, oh, I just heard this new most epic part of the song 
and it blew my brains out in a good way. Um, and, and, and now the song's over. So they hit back, right? They want to hear that song again because they heard the best part. They thought the best part was the chorus, right? And then you gave them a new best part. You somehow one-upped yourself when they thought you couldn't or wouldn't. They thought, like, they were pretty content. They had a verse. They had a chorus. They're like, okay, chorus is probably the highlight of the song. They're like, oh, that's a pretty good chorus. Second verse, chorus. Then you hit them with a finale and they're like, oh, I thought that was the highlight. This is even better than I imagined, right? Then now there's this new amazing part, that a pleasant surprise, right? Like, I didn't see this coming. You know, I expected maybe a bridge and then back to the chorus, but I didn't expect this finale, this whole new section. That's awesome. Like, I want to hear that again, right? That's the effect that a good finale should have, which is a great effect to want to have, right? Like, it's sort of... In a way, it might be sort of the opposite approach as, you know, repeating that final chorus, right? If, if you're doing a chorus for the third or fourth time and it's the biggest chorus, it might leave people wanting more. But for the most part, it probably leaves them pretty satisfied. Like, yeah, I just heard that awesome chorus four times. With a finale, though, you're making it like, whoa, let's hear it again. thing I would compare it to. Is, is something like your average Christopher Nolan movie, which I mentioned because I'm very excited. I'm going to Tenet tonight. I'm very excited. Be kind, people. Don't comment in this video spoilers for other people. Don't do it, okay? I will have seen it by then, but don't do it for the sake of others. Please, I, I beg you. Unless it's like three years later, then, then go ahead. If you're in like 2022 watching this, go ahead. The, uh... The time has passed. You're allowed to comment now. But anyway, so if you've ever seen, well, I won't spoil anything. Don't worry. It'd be pretty ironic if I did, though, right? Uh, after just being like, oh, don't spoil this this new Christopher Nolan movie. Let me spoil some old ones. Um, although the time has passed, but still. So like The Prestige, if you've ever seen it, is very much a movie where you know, you're, you're kind of confused the whole time. And then the reveal, which I will not say, blows your mind. And there's like a couple of reveals within the reveal. It blows your mind. And then like the movie's over and you're like, uh, watch it again right now. Right. Like that's sort of the effect it has. It's that twist ending that like <gasps> it all makes sense now. Like everything I was confused about during the movie and sort of overwhelmed by all of a sudden makes sense. But now I need to rewatch it so that I can watch it with an understanding of where it's going. Cause now I'm trying to like backtrack of like, <gasps> so, oh, so this was oh, okay. And then this scene was that, oh, okay. It, so you want to watch it again. Inception has a similar effect. Not so much with a twist ending. There's not really a twist at the end. There's just a, a, um, a, cliffhanger, if you will, of sorts, but it's a similar effect, right? Like that, that like leaves you on this high note. That's like, Oh, I just, I, I kind of want to watch it again. I, I, I want more of this. And that's what a great finale is going to do for you. So let's, let's, let's dive a little bit more into really what, what is a finale? Cause I missed this when talking about finale. To me, the best way to look at it, if you're still confused, okay, but you've said a lot of these like generic things about like the effect it should have on people and what its goal is, which is good. But like, can you put it in terms of other song sections? Yes, I can. I'm glad you asked. And if you didn't ask, I'm answering it anyway. You're welcome. So, <laughs> um, the, so I see it like this. It's a hybrid between a chorus and a bridge. So to me, a chorus fundamentally is basically two things. It usually functions as the highlight of the song, right? It's the high point of the song, usually, both thematically and musically. Also, it usually repeats, right? And when I say it repeats, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a, a part of the repeating song structure, right? So you have verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then you change it up to bridge, chorus, or bridge, first chorus again, right? Like, so it's a part of that, that A, B, A, B, A, B, uh, you know, there might be a C thrown in, there might be a C and a D, whatever, but like a chorus is something that's going to repeat and it's the highlight. It's the main theme between A and B. It's, it's the, which it's kind of weird to think of it like B in that case, even though that really would be the B section, but the B is the highlight here, not the A. Um, 
So those, to me, are the two basically fundamental things about a chorus. And then a bridge, we've talked about this in this series, but in case, just as a review, or if you haven't watched the other ones, the bridge is the only section of the song, right, that does not repeat in any way. Because verses, it's the same exact music, and, and the lyrics change, right? The melody's the same, the chords behind it, the harmonies, that's all the same. The, the lyrics change, though. The chorus usually is exactly the same, right? Usually you don't even change the lyrics. You might change the lyrics, though, in which case it's still like a verse. The music has, you've heard this melody before. You've heard these chords before. You've heard this basic arrangement before. The bridge is that first C section, right, of like, this is a totally new thing that I haven't heard before. It's probably in the same key, unless you're doing the relative minor or whatever, but it's it's totally new. The melody's new, the lyrics are new, and the chord progression might be new. That's the only part that maybe isn't new. But it's the first time that the melody and lyrics are both new, besides the first time you heard the chorus and the first time you heard the verse. But as far as a song section that does not repeat, the bridge, that is that that is what that is. So that's one fundamental part of a bridge. Happens only once. The other part of a bridge is that it it bridges you back to the chorus. So it, it, it functions to sort of highlight that chorus because it's bringing you back to that chorus. The bridge is not going to overshadow the chorus. Right? It's going to bring you back to the chorus so that you're like, yes, this chorus is that high point again. So to me, a finale is taking the highlight of the song concept from the chorus and the doesn't repeat, only is played once concept from the bridge and combining them. That's what it's doing. So now the chorus was a highlight of the song until you get to the finale. Now that's the new highlight of the song. You one-upped your chorus which again is very exciting to people because they thought the chorus was going to be the highlight and now you somehow outdid yourself, right? So that's one aspect. And then from the bridge, it's a brand new section, right? It's something new. The bridge, it causes people to retune in because it's something new. They haven't heard that part before. So now they're like, oh, okay, okay. You know, maybe you were starting to lose them because they're like, oh, I've heard this chorus before. It's good, but like I heard it before. I can tune out a little bit, but the bridge is new, right? Now the finale is the new part, and you might have a bridge too, as for what it's worth. But um, but this finale is new, and it's the highlight, and it happens at the end, and, and then it boom leaves song over. Which is not to say you can't have an outro or anything. Of course you can, but the concept is after the finale, you're not going back to a verse. You're not probably you're not, you're maybe like a, a subset of a verse just to like end the song, maybe. But. Um, you're not going back to the chorus, though. You should not be going back to the chorus, because again, it's finale, f- final. Final is in that word. So to me, that's what a finale is. You're taking a bit of the bridge and a bit of the chorus and bringing those two things together, and you're making this new song section. You're taking two of the cool things about each of those sections and combining them while trashing some of the other parts, right? So the chorus being, being something that repeats, you're getting rid of that. You don't have that for a finale, which is for the effect of finales trying to have a good thing. So should I write a finale for my song? This is a difficult question to answer. So we're going to start from here. The two song sections that I just said, parts of them influence what to me is a finale, are two sections that sometimes can be converted into a finale in the right circumstance. So... If your chorus would be better suited as a story or a thematic wrap-up at the end of the song, then it functions as as just a wrap-up to each individual verse, then maybe you should be converting that chorus to a finale. Because it it maybe when you sing that chorus lyrically, you've almost wrapped up the whole song at the end of the first verse. You have nothing more to say. And yet the song goes on for another three minutes, right? That may be the case, in which case, if it really feels like the song thematically is wrapped up and now you're just going to repeat yourself for a while, maybe it should be converted into a finale. Another way to look at it, maybe you have a bridge. Maybe that bridge overshadows the chorus. 
that when you go to the course after the bridge, it actually feels like a disappointment because the bridge was so killer. Convert that bridge into a finale, maybe. Don't go back to the course. Right? Why, why do you need to go back to the course? Maybe that bridge would function better as a finale, especially if it thematically wraps, wraps things up, if it wraps up the whole song, and you really don't have to go back to the themes contained in the chorus. Don't. Make it a finale. And even, even if, if, if you don't have a song that is currently ripe for converting or doesn't, you know, because what we're talking about here, right, is, is maybe have a song that something just doesn't feel right, something's underwhelming, or, you know, the bridge is overshadowing the chorus, so is my chorus bad, right? Like, all these different questions. Finale may be your, may be your answer, but it also might not. So, so be careful about this, right? I'm not saying throw a finale in there because there are dangers. And one danger is, is, is back to the twist ending, right? I just talked about how the prestige Christopher Nolan film, amazing example of a twist ending. Pulls it off in every possible way. It's an amazing twist. Um, his film Memento also qualifies for the record. But um, anyway, but then there are other twists, right, that we've all heard of that people are like, ugh. Right? Like, uh, such a dumb twist. Or, like, people make fun of M. Night Shyamalan or whatever for, like, now the twist is so expected in his films that, like, and most of them aren't as good as what some of his original twists are. I've never seen one of his films, for the record. So, so for what it's worth, I'm just going off of what people say. So, don't hate me if I'm wrong here. But a lot of people are like, uh, I mean, it, you know, a lot of his twists fall flat and sometimes it undermines the story before or something. And even if not, even if maybe I'm wrong about that, there certainly are other movies, right? That have a twist ending at the end that feels cheap. Like, oh, you just, that doesn't even really make sense. You're just trying to shock me, but you kind of just ruined and undermined the whole movie before. Similarly, a finale can do that if you don't do it right. So proceed with caution, right? A finale is not always the right answer. Sometimes the chorus does wrap up the song very well. Sometimes it's the core, it's it's hard to one up the chorus, right? Like not all choruses are one upable in the context of a song, right? It's it's not always gonna happen, but sometimes a chorus is is sort of sitting in a location where it's just right, but it doesn't it doesn't have the emotional punch you want the end of the song to have. And just laying a few more guitars won't do it. So a finale might be the way to go. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about this finale concept? Do you like it? Are you going to use it? Have you seen this in other songs besides Journeys Don't Stop Believing? Which, by the way, go check out that video. I posted that uh, a couple of days ago. But <clears throat> regardless of that, brief summary. Basically, some places consider... Uh, if you look up the lyrics, everywhere will call that don't stop believe in section, which is only at the end, a chorus, but yet it doesn't repeat at all before. It doesn't come until the end of the song. And then it, the song literally fades out while they're still doing it. Um, there's a slight argument that it's, it could be a chorus in there that I address in the video. But for the most part, I would argue that that is a clear, what I would call a finale. Highlight at the end, doesn't come before the end. Once it gets there, it doesn't do anything else. It, I mean, literally, this even fades. Like, it fades while still doing it. So that's the epitome of not doing anything else, right? It doesn't even have a little outro to finish out the song, much less going back to a previous section. Literally fades out on it. And it's the title of the song, right? Like, talk about the highlight of the song. I mean, the... If, like, everybody knows that section. A lot of people might not actually know the earlier sections, which would be pretty sad, but just because it's like the song's everywhere. But, but you know, it's technically possible. Anyway, go check that out. I took 30 minutes, which I know is a long time. Broke down that song. There's a lot of good stuff to learn from that song. Uh, on that subject, in this series, uh, or sorry, in, in those videos, I am going to be breaking down a bunch of different songs. I'll do some pop songs. I'll do some less well-known songs. I'm going to do songs that I like, songs that I maybe don't like that much. I'm, so I, I'm going to do all kinds of songs. If there's a song that you want me to break down, put it in the comments below or comment under one of those videos. And you know what? If I think that it's a good song for us to listen to and, and take stuff away from, we'll do it. Because I'm a big believer, hey, even songs that I don't like, even songs you don't like, even songs that aren't very good, there are always things to learn 
from other songs, whether it be like, look at this good thing they did or look at this not great thing they did. Here's maybe how we could fix it. Or, you know, just look at this not very good thing they did. They should have done something else. I don't know what the something else is, but let's just address like that was not a good lyric. That was a weird wonky chord progression change, or maybe they shouldn't try to sing that note when I can hear the pitch correction in that high note. So clearly they can't really hit it. So how are you going to do it in concert? Anyway, we break down all that kind of stuff. I hope you enjoy that series. The goal of it is it's not really a reacts. It, it, I guess looks like a reacts in some way, but the goal of it is to break down songs so that we as songwriters can learn from these songs, good things, bad things, all kinds of things. Um, that's really the goal, not, you know, your typical reacts video where someone's like, Oh, they did a, whoa, whoa, whoa. like, come on, who cares? That doesn't add any value. Anyway, I thought today, maybe I wouldn't be snarky to anybody, but there I go again. Just, just can't turn off the snark, I guess. Uh, so as always, if you enjoyed this, drop a like, if you're not on YouTube, the way that you can let me know that you enjoyed it is that you can leave a review on iTunes. I have seen those of you who have left reviews. Very kind of you. I appreciate all of you. And also a little shout out to Will, who reached out to me via email uh, this morning, I think it was, or yesterday. But I saw the email this morning. I have not responded yet because I peeked at it in between church services this morning. But I will respond to it. And I also want to give you a shout out on the pod slash on this video I appreciate the kind words, good sir. And stuff like that is what makes me extra motivated to come back and record more episodes. Not not that I want to not do that, to be clear. But nice emails like that definitely give me that extra reason to keep going and that extra reason to like feel really good about what we're doing here. And over time, the community that we're gonna grow of, of people that are want to take songwriting seriously, and 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 be committed to the art of songwriting rather than like i just want to write a song that makes it on the radio like that's what excites me so i appreciate the email will there's a shout out because you deserve it good sir for the rest of you thanks as always for listening Thanks to all of you who do reach out via email. I do like dialoguing with you. I enjoy answering your questions. If you have something you want me to cover, you can always email me, joseph at songwritertheory.com, or you can drop it in the comments below if you're on YouTube. And I will talk to you next week, or maybe, maybe sooner, if you check out whatever video I might end up posting for this week for the songwriting analysis. I think I have a song lined up to do this week, but we shall see. If not, go check out the Don't Stop Believing one that I did on YouTube and hopefully you enjoy it. Leave a comment on that video. Let me know what you think. And I will talk to you sometime in the next week. <laughs>